One of the most powerful features in all of Firebase is its integration with Google Analytics. In this video, I'll show you how to collect sophisticated data about the behavior of your users and then put that data to use to custom tailor the user experience and improve conversion rates for whatever product you sell on your app. And if you're a web developer, I have great news because Firebase just recently added support for analytics on the web. If you're new here, like and subscribe and check out the full lesson on Fireship.io. What we're going to do today is enable Google Analytics in a Firebase project for the web. And then I'll show you how to log custom analytics events in a JavaScript application. Then we'll fast forward a couple days into the future after we've collected some data and use a service called Remote Config to custom tailor the user experience based on our analytics data. Now, if you're not already using Google Analytics in your Firebase project, you probably should be. It's a free service that provides insight about the behavior of your users that will ultimately drive your decisions about marketing and the development of your app. And when it comes to Firebase, your analytics data can enhance and unlock other features in the platform. For example, you can tie your analytics data to your push notifications, allowing you to send the right notification to the right user at the right time. And as we'll see in this video, it unlocks a feature that's new to the web called Remote Config. It provides a way for you to read data related to your analytics directly in your app. That means you can roll out experimental features to a subset of users, show conditional marketing campaigns, among a whole bunch of other possibilities. Now let's go ahead and get started by setting up our web application with Firebase Analytics. The process is slightly different depending on whether or not you already have a Google Analytics account and a Firebase project, so make sure to reference the official docs depending on your situation. In my case, I had an existing Firebase project that was also already using Google Analytics. So the process to enable analytics in this project was to click this Begin Upgrade button that you'll see up here in the top right corner of the Analytics dashboard. When you click this button, it will have you click through a few pages and then link your actual Google Analytics project. When you finish the transfer process, it's going to make one small subtle change to your Firebase project settings. If we go to the settings tab, you'll notice that we now have a measurement ID property in the Firebase config. So if you have an existing app, you'll want to update this measurement ID in your Firebase config to get analytics working in your project. Now, I actually just set up Firebase analytics in this project a couple days ago. And what you'll notice on the dashboard is that we're starting to get reporting on the daily, weekly, and monthly active users, along with their locations. And all this reporting is now combined across iOS, Android, and the web. Now, by simply adding analytics to your project, you will collect a bunch of data automatically. Things like the user's location, their operating system, browser, and stuff like that. There's a bunch of different reports you can explore here, but my favorite one is StreamView. It allows you to see where your users are located on the map and who's using the app in real time. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual setup for your typical JavaScript application. We have a very basic setup here with an app.js and index.html file. Most developers will be using a framework like Angular, React, etc., which means you should have a package.json file. Inside that package, you'll want to make sure that you update Firebase to version 7 or greater. Now, in this particular demo, we're using Firebase Hosting along with its magic script tags in the index.html. You'll notice they're using Firebase version 7, and I've imported Firebase Analytics as well as Firebase Remote Config. Now, if we jump into our actual JavaScript code, the first thing we'll want to do is initialize Firebase, making sure that we update our Firebase config with the new measurement ID. Then from there, we'll call Firebase initialize app and then make a reference to Firebase analytics. These steps might look a little bit different depending on your setup, but that's the gist of it. Update Firebase to version seven and make a reference to analytics. So as a bare minimum, you could add analytics to your project and get all of this nice reporting and insight about your users. But the way you really maximize the insight you gain about your own specific app is to report custom events. Now, I'll just go ahead and set up a hypothetical example here in our code. Let's say we have the sign-in function, and its purpose is to sign the user in anonymously or with email password or Google login or something like that. What we'd like to do is report that a login event has occurred. So after the user signs in, we'll go ahead and extract the sign-in method from the user credential. Then we can call analytics log event with the name of the event that we want to log. And then optionally, as a second argument, we can pass an object with additional parameters for that event, which in this case will be the login method. And it's also worth noting that login is actually a built-in event in Google Analytics. So this technically isn't a custom event. It's generally better to use a built-in event if it fits your needs. So make sure to check out the Google Analytics reference for a full list of events. But if you don't see the right event, it's perfectly okay to create your own custom event. 
For example, imagine we're building a game and we want to log a new game event to analytics. We call the same log event method and pass the string name of our event and then any optional parameters as the second argument as an object. And that's really all there is to it when it comes to reporting events. When you start collecting data, you'll be able to see that data in the events tab in the Firebase console. You can optionally mark events as conversions, which would be something like an in-app payment, which will help you manage your marketing efforts towards that specific event. Now you can generate reports for these events and the custom parameters that you report. But the one thing worth noting here is that if you have a custom parameter, you'll need to register it in the Firebase console. You'll want to click edit parameter reporting and then find a built-in parameter or use one of your custom parameters here. And you'll also notice when you add the parameter, it will ask you whether or not it's a text or number field. Text would be used for discrete values or things that can be counted like labels. And then numbers would be for continuous values, things like length, time, and currency that can't be counted but can be averaged out. Now, if you're just getting started with analytics, I would recommend going through your app and trying to find maybe five to 10 different events that you can report that you think would be useful to understanding the behavior of your users. You don't need to go overboard with the number of events that you report. Quality is always better than quantity. Now, in a lot of cases, you have a distinct set of events that you expect the user to follow. On the web, you might have a multi-step form and you want to record a separate event for each step in that form. Once you have that done, you can come to the Funnels tab and analyze how well that funnel actually performs. Essentially, you can connect one event to another to see how the user goes through those steps and see if there's a certain step where the user drops off or maybe one that is more likely to convert to a paying customer. So now that we have some custom events flowing through the app, we likely want to segment those events to a smaller subset of users. Let's head back over to the source code and I'll show you how to set up something called a user property. In most Firebase apps, you'll be listening to the current user with the on auth state changed callback. When you listen to the current user globally, you can set the current user ID by calling analytics set user ID with the user object from the auth state. And this allows analytics to collect information about a specific user across multiple sessions. But you might have additional things going on about a user that you want to report to analytics. For example, you might use something like role-based user access control. So you listen to the ID token and that ID token will tell you whether or not that user is an admin user or a moderator or something along those lines. And then you can pass that data onto analytics so it can segment your users based on this custom user property. One way to think of this is that a user property defines what a user is, while an event defines what a user does in the app. And you can set the user properties by simply calling analytics set user properties with an object of the data that you want to set. Now, when working with custom user properties, you'll want to go to the user properties tab and register those properties on the Firebase console. And all you need to do is enter the string name of the property. The real benefit of user properties comes into play when you start building audiences. Let's head over to the audience tab and create a new audience. Firebase will give you a bunch of hints with default audiences, but we'll just go ahead and create a custom one from scratch. You can customize your audiences based on events and user properties. What I want to do here is create an audience of users that have triggered the login event, but that have a user property of a pro membership that's canceled. On Fireship, that would be a user that used to be a member, but that is still using the site, so maybe they want to sign up again. And if they do want to sign up, we should probably offer some kind of discount code. And that's exactly the type of thing we can do with remote config. Head over to the remote config tab and click add new parameter. A parameter is essentially a key value pair, but the actual value is activated based on some condition in your analytics data set. In this case, we'll call it special discount, and then we'll add a new condition for a veteran Fireship user. The first thing we'll do is set the app equal to our web app. And then we'll add a second condition that is equal to one of the user audiences that we created on the Firebase console. And we could also add a bunch of extra conditions here as well if we wanted to segment it by region or by device. And we can even sample it to a smaller subset of random users. For example, in this case, we'll only offer the discount to a lucky 50% of users. And that feature happens to be especially useful if you're rolling out a new feature, but you don't want to roll it out to the entire user base all at once. And another cool thing about remote config is that when you set up different conditions, you can reuse those conditions across multiple parameters. If you go to the conditions tab, you can see all of your conditions there and update them across all parameters at the same time. And now that we have some parameters, let's head back to our source code and see how we can put them to use in our JavaScript app. 
We can reference remote config in the SDK by calling Firebase remote config. And then you can set a specific interval for how often it fetches the values from remote config. It's not like the real-time database or Firestore where it's constantly listening for updates. So just keep in mind that changes to remote config aren't instantaneous like they are in other Firebase services. And it's also a good idea to set up a default config, which are just default values in case they can't be fetched from the Firebase servers. From there, we'll call fetch and activate, which will actually retrieve the values from Firebase. And then it provides type safe getters that we can use to read the actual values from remote config. So if we're expecting a string value, we can call remote config get string followed by the parameter name. And you can do the same thing for get boolean, number, and so on. If you're using a framework, you would likely retrieve these values somewhere high up in the application, like the app component, during your initial lifecycle hook. And that would allow you to conditionally render UI based on these remote config values. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. We barely just scratched the surface, but it is very awesome to finally see analytics and remote config available for Firebase. On the web, that is. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.